thin on this encyclopedia with an electron microscope. The next question is, how would we write it? Well, it, it's possible to write it someday by using a kind of a thing like an electron microscope in reverse, in which to take the large scale writing and use the lenses backwards to control a beam, which is so far, which is very fine instead of running the microscope. You know, you can run a telescope backwards, you look through the wrong end, you've probably done this and everything looks small. You can do the same with a microscope and you can do that with an electron microscope. So you can make the pictures very tiny and imprint them easily, 20, not very easily. This turns out at the present time to be very difficult at the moment. That reverse electron microscope has not been developed very far, but I'm going to tell you what the situation is today. The first time I ever gave this part of the speech was 20 years ago, and you just said that someday, I'm surprised we haven't done it yet, and someday it'll be done. Now I can show that it can be done. But before I do that, I would like to talk about what we are now actually doing commercially in making things. How small do we make things? How delicately can we make them? Are we writing the Lord's Prayer on the head of a pin? No, we're not actually writing the Lord's Prayer on the head of a pin. We're doing a much smaller scale than that, but we're not writing the Lord's Prayer because in the meantime, uh, interests have changed somewhat. And uh, I'll show you on the first slide, if it's available, please. Uh, something that you've all heard of, which is a computer chip, which is made uh, What happened to the slide? Oh, I see. Okay. This is only uh, 20,000 times reduced, and it's very difficult to see it because it's so fine. Is that we have? That's it. Good and it has to be focused. It's really quite difficult to see that there's a very fine structure and you can see some of the structure but you can't quite see how fine it really is. This whole thing is about a three millimeters across and you've seen these things in magazines and you say, well, it's just computers and so on. But from the point of view of humankind and its development, it's really quite an achievement to be able to manufacture something with such fineness of detail. The patterns look rather beautiful when they're worked out, and it does appear uh, as an artistic thing too, but the beautiful thing about this is the delightfully accurate workmanship. We're always talking about workmanship, you don't do anything like we used to do, we used to polish things down. The accuracy which they polish things is less than one of these little notches in here. Now we can even make something in that much detail, and it's made and used this is an example of a computer chip. I'm sorry to bother you to put the lights back again, but it'll be a minute or two before I get to the next slide, okay? It's a kind of a complicated arrangement. Because I wanted to explain how such a thing is made. This is made, I, I was magnified about 20,000 times. We can make things at uh, 2,000 times, I mean. That was 2,000 times. 20,000 times is very much harder because 2,000 times we can use light. And the way it's done is to use a lens system, a microscope, backwards. What we do is uh, we take some material, in fact, in this particular case, it's silicon, and there's a layer of very beautifully made, very pure silicon. The reason is any piece of dirt or scratch or anything that's wrong with it is a great big monster boulder at this scale, and you don't want any dirt, so you get very pure silicon. And then, in a vacuum, you let in oxygen. And then what forms on the surface of this is a layer of the compound silicon dioxide, which is simply quartz or sand or, or like glass. It's a thin layer of glass, which is an insulator. Silicon is a conductor. So you, we're going to build this thing up. Now on top of this, the next layer, we put on some, uh, oh, I got lots of colors, that's great. Another chemical which is called is evaporated on in the thin layer which is called a photoresist. And then light is shine shown on here. Light comes down. Let's say like this in a pattern. No light here and only light here and here because it's an optical system. It's a picture. In other words a picture is projected, black and white picture is shown on here. And what happens to the light, what the light does, is make this material resist 
etching later, or rather dissolving it off, excuse me. So it gets to be resistant here, where the light shone. I've got a simple pattern, but you might have a little section in here and so forth. So you can make the shapes that you want by using the light backwards to make this thing so that it doesn't dissolve. And then what happens, you dissolve this material away, right? And just have these. And then you attack the silicon dioxide, the glass, with hydrofluoric acid, which dissolves glass. And this part is erased so that this disappears. I won't, let's say the silicon dioxide is white and, oh, oh, brown, brown. So brown. And so we get things like this, you see, little columns of brown on top of the silicon, right? And then the red stuff that I showed there is dissolved by another chemical because it was only a tool and a scaffolding. And so we get to this picture. Remember that these are insulators and this is a conductor. So the next step is to shine some is to evaporate some silicon again and to make a contact. It goes on and on, and I'm not going to go on and on. But the next level, say, silicon or transistor material, which is silicon with something dissolved in it, let's say is lay laid down here in a layer all over, filling all this. But then, again, with a resist and so forth, pieces of it are dissolved away so they can get little caps and so on and make more insulator in various layers, each time deciding where the stuff goes by using this photoresist trick. And they're ultimately building up, say, a metal connector, finally, with a similar device, the same general idea, 